Hello, and welcome to Tuning In, Tuning Up. I'm Lori Townsend from the UBC School of Music, and I'm here with Don Harder, a freelance recording engineer who retired from CBC Radio Music after a long and very successful career. Tuning In, Tuning Up are companion chats to our school's Wednesday noon hour series being streamed this season. Don, like our other guests, is a local professional in the music field whose work involves skilled listening, and he's here to share some tips. A UBC alumnus, he has spent four decades working with some of the world's finest musicians, and he has some lovely hardware to show for it. He's worked on a number of projects that have received Junos and a couple of Grammys and also West Coast Music Awards. So it's a real pleasure to welcome Don today. Welcome. Great to be here, thanks. So let's get going. Uh, what do you listen for when you're recording or about to record a performance? I'm always listening for balance. I'm not, that's, that's what my job is, is to just listen for the levels between instruments. Interesting point in North America, we call it being a recording engineer. In, in the UK, they call it being a balance engineer, which is more, I, I think, more represents what we do. Uh, the controls we have as a professional you know, like as, record, as a balance engineer, is choosing microphones, putting it in places that favor certain in instruments, um, moving things around. Um, so if I'm at a concert, just listening for the joy of listening, my ear always goes to what the balance is in between the various instruments. Uh, things that that I, I would, my mind always goes to, oh, I'd move the violin a little bit this way, so it would, it would, it would sound better there. Um, I always, panic when I see a cello in front of a piano, um, a Brahms uh, cello uh, sonata, um, it just gets eaten up by the sounds of the piano. So I'm always thinking, how is the resonance of the piano fitting in and it's, is it covering the, the resonance of the cello? So I'm always thinking of that kind of balance. What's the difference between direct and reflected sound? I've heard people talking about this. There's another aspect to the balance. How you position a group in a, in a, in a hall and where you listen is, is, is totally a controlled balance thing. Um, the instruments, the sound coming off of the instruments is direct sound. It takes a bounce off the floor. It'll take a bounce off of the side wall on the stage. It'll take a bounce off of various other things in the concert hall and arrive to you, the listener, or in my case, the microphones, with a combination of the direct and the reflected sound. In a big boomy hall, you got you want to get rid of the reflected sound because it's that's just um, it overwhelms the direct sound. You, you lose clarity, you lose the finer points of the inner lines, um, all that kind of stuff becomes smudged and smooshed and, and just unpleasant to work with. So as a balance engineer, if I'm working with microphones, I'm trying to find where that sweet spot is that gets a sense of the room and enough of the direct sound that you have that clarity and the line is 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 is, is what the performers intend and the and the composer intended so is this always the case what about a really dry hall without much reverb one of the reasons i've loved my job job for all these years is the sort of psychoacoustics you know how the brain takes what the ears hear and processes it um, really good hall in point is uh, the Queen Elizabeth Playhouse, which is often used by um, uh, Vancouver Recital Society. Friends of Chamber Music do a lot of um, solo recitals and, and um, string quartets, trios, that, that sort of stuff. Um, when one sits in that room, which is a, a room designed for theater, spoken word, so there's the direct sound is, is really encouraged in that room, just through proper acoustic design. And there's very little reflected sound. You step in that room and you listen to a string quartet in the first 10 seconds, you're going, oh my goodness, that is so dry and unpleasant. Then the brain kind of clicks, it sort of makes a few adjustments and does what brains do. And you start to realize, my, oh, this is, this is wonderful. I can hear the direct interplay of the instruments. You're hearing the viola line, how it fits in with the second violin line. Your, your brain doesn't make up reverb for it, but your brain says, I can see so well and I can hear so much detail that you forget that it doesn't have reverb. Now, if a, if a hall is really unpleasant, you know, like it's got some bad early reflections, um, it'll still sound dry and really unpleasant. The instruments don't sound like they should sound and, you know, that's bad. But 
place like the um, um, the playhouse, uh, it 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 the brain takes over and makes up what what the ear is missing. It's it's really quite wonderful. Well, thank you for explaining that because I've had that happen to me at like a, a beginning of a piano recital in a big biggish hall. It initially the first notes sound like they're far away uh, and distant and you're saying in this few seconds something the brain goes and does something and then suddenly I'm there and feeling close and connected to what I'm seeing and hearing. Thank yep. you so much for explaining that. Um, how else is the concert experience different from a recording session? Oh goodness, um, as the listener in, 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 in the case of a recording session or a concert, um, quite a different task. In a recording session, um, the production team, producer, myself, and uh, um, are listening for errors and mistakes, um, incorrect notes, rushing ensemble differences, you know, um, someone's rushing and, and, and things just not fitting together. Um, I kind of call it, um, our, our job at that point is catching clams. We are, we're kind of, we're, we're trying to find and identify absolutely every bit that isn't working and then get a take where it does work so I can stitch it together. You know, it's, it's editing it together. It's a, it's a rather um, particularly unmusical way of, of listening to music. You're just listening for what's bad and then trying to make it better. So the producer's job is to, is to coach the piece. And, and help it get into a form that that all those things work. And if you're if you're lucky, by the time you spend a fair bit of time working with this kind of attention, you will get a really good through take that. Like it, it, it's 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 like a coaching session with a really good you know really good teacher. Where oh that's what we weren't paying attention to. So recording sessions are very particular in that sense, and it's it can be stressful. Um, you're trying to problem solve and sometimes musicians can get off track as to how to receive guidance to solve problems. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes things are written in such a way that it's difficult to, to push that through, but that's what the task is with that. So my challenge is when I listen to a concert without microphones and speakers and headphones and all that stuff is to drop all of that stuff. I'm no longer catching clams. I'm just listening for the joy of listening. So once I get over the, the balance, you know, I may sit closer up if I find that there's too reverberant, or I may sit further away if I find it's too direct. You know, once I've solved my balance issues as a listener, to give up on worrying about the clams and just follow the musical line, it becomes sort of a, a challenge. I've, I've, I've spent years sometimes successfully, often not successfully, listening for the joy of listening. And you find magic in the joy of listening too when you can switch over to being a listener oh, through joy? Absolutely, oh, oh yes, yeah, that, that's, that's, you know, having worked with scores for, you know, really connected for 40 years, I think I'm finally understanding how music is put together and works. Like, I'm finally getting it. So when I go to a concert and, and, and follow the musical line and, 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 and not worry about things, and I'm just, oh, it's, it's, it's wonderful. And, and a good performer can take you to that place in a way that you just go, oh, my goodness. I'm particularly fond of big orchestral, big orchestral sounds. I mean, I, that, that's, you know, it's kind of what I, what I love the most. And when you hear a good conductor play an orchestra as if he were playing the piano and how the orchestra responds, Oh, goodness, that's wonderful. Oh, love it. Absolutely love it. Oh, great. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Don. This has been ear opening and mind opening. I, and it's just been such a pleasure chatting. My pleasure's all mine, Lori. Oh, great. And thanks to everyone who's been tuning in. Until next time. <laughs>